urban development uh, organisation, the urban development industry, is a strange science in a lot of ways. Indeed, um, many of our colleagues wonder what we do from time to time. But there's seven billion people in the world and at least half of them would be uh, below average IQ or in some cases illiterate. 0.5% of those people live in Australia. Uh, many only, not all of us, have the opportunity of the education that you've had. But more importantly, even less are interested in urban development and indeed urban development in Brisbane. And I've probably got the whole 140 of us here who are interested in urban development in Brisbane. Our process goes back, as, uh, as I've been uh, well introduced, some 24 years I think we've been running our property solutions, but I've actually been in the property industry even longer than that. And uh, some of the photos that you saw uh, on, that, on your introduction of a very young man were probably me only a couple of years ago because of the recession, how, uh, how much has taken effect on all of us. Centre on James Street, though, is our most famous project and the one that I think uh, shaped the most of what you're asking me to talk about, which is shape the face of Brisbane. I might go back, though, and show you <clears throat> what James Street was before. I was jogging down James Street one night uh, and I used to go to the police youth club there in Fortitude Valley and uh, a guy called Lenny Willis and I were jogging along together and I'm pleased to say as a young man it was then and now he's building home units himself but it, we were jogging down the road and he said, Kevin, he said, you'd say, you wouldn't believe it, some idiots just bought all this land and uh, they think they're going to make a development out of it. So I had to take a, take a deep breath and say, well, <coughs> Lenny, um, that's me. <laughs> but we did pay $250 a metre for it and we had to compete to get it. And it was interesting, that whole competition. So, um, as Lenny said, some idiot had bought this thing and but bought it for $250 a metre. But more importantly, we established the trust of the Coca-Cola company. We, um, we negotiated the first piece of land which was on the north side, which you'll find is now, in fact, partly the site of the James Street markets, but was, was um, also, uh, and that's actually a uh, part of that, that's uh, the corner of McLaughlin Street, that photo there, but, um, and that was indeed where the James Street Markets is right now, is where that, that brick structure is. But what we, um, what we found was that there was contamination in the site. Coca-Cola wanted to get rid of the site, but by protecting their brand name throughout the world, insisted that they were the ones that decontaminated the site. That created an opportunity, and the opportunity for a small development company like us was that we were able to buy the site in stages. There was a guy called John Jemison who was one of my mentors in an early date. He's not much older than me, but he was a very, very well-respected developer in the early years, and he thought he had this site. He certainly um, had all the legal fraternity around his finger. Coca-Cola's lawyer was the best mate, is one of his best mates. So he went away on school holidays every year in May and every year in September, and I happened to know that. So I waited until May and uh, managed to sneak in and buy the site from under him. And the best thing that I did to, was, even though I had to uh, mortgage my wife's house to buy the first site, I got Coca-Cola to agree on a handshake to sell me the rest of the site at $250 a metre as and when it came up. And to their credit, almost three years later, they stuck to that, even though the, the values of the sites were rising then and are now worth two and a half or $3,000 a square metre. So. Uh, my partner and I had been to the US on several occasions, mainly to watch the boxing, but generally decided that every, every city we found that was about the size of Brisbane, we would have a real close look at what the future might be. And the common thing that we noticed was that between airports and cities, there was this what was called high-tech industrial development. And it had many names and many forms, but how, the Howard Hughes Corporation's name kept coming up. He, uh, he established and bought around most airports large tracts of land, including Las Vegas, including Santa Barbara, California, and all sorts of places where you wouldn't normally expect industrial development or indeed commercial development to happen. And in his lifetime, he created these high-tech industrial cities, which still stand today in his name, the Howard Hughes Corporation, which must be worth a fortune. Anyway, we decided that when we came back to Brisbane, we would try to buy every piece of land we could between the valley and the airport. Now this was a two, two fellows, David Blank and I, with limited resources, so to speak, two family businesses. To, uh, we'd, I'd been in business by then uh, 
probably seven or eight years as property solutions and my wife and I had been building houses and home units as best we could and accumulated a little bit of money, but, but certainly not to the scale of buying sites like Coca-Cola. But as I said, buying it in stages helped. But the thing that helped and the thing that made us, made us drive forward was the emerging market for institutions. And that's become our major market. Institutions don't share the same vision we have. They only, can only buy something they can see. Then they say, well, if they buy something they can see and they've got to pay stamp duty on it and be the last in to buy it, perhaps they should have a little bit more vision and be able to read brochures and read plans and therefore they could buy off the plan. And sure enough, along came one of those institutions and we were just coming out of the ground on for stage one and we sold it to them for, I think it was, $17 million, which was a lot of money when the land was only $1.2 million. And what's more, they then, like us, had an option from... Uh, from Coca-Cola, they wanted to buy all the rest of the estate. The stupidest thing they did was not buy it. The stupidest thing we did was sell it to someone else. We should have kept the whole of James Street, and that's a lesson that I'd like to pass on to you tonight. A lesson that we've learnt at the barracks and managed to be able to keep it, but not that I object to um, the guys who did buy it off and office. Indeed, uh, they've done a wonderful job. They, they are absolute export experts, and they've taught us a trick or two about maintaining and managing property and increasing rents over time. And that's the, the Georges and the Maloofs who've, who've done their, their thing and done it extraordinarily well.